So you see, in all of those energy conversions just described, heat is always actually just being lost in, in every one of those conversions. From the sun, the ultimate source of energy, uh, through photosynthesis, and then storing energy as fossil fuels, burning those fossil fuels, being able to obtain uh, uh, energy through boiling water in order to uh, facilitate the production of electrical energy and then converting that to mechanical energy to shave your face. All of those reactions release heat from themselves. So you can't have proper 100% energy conservation from one exchange to the next one. And actually, if you could, we could actually make perpetual motion machines. But we can't do that because, you know, even though we can really try to increase the efficiency of being able to convert energy, some of that energy that is released from a reaction or absorbed must go to increasing that entropy of the universe that I talked about before. So the thing is, it's not ever possible to be able to get a 100% energy conversion. You always lose some as heat. Now, here are some important terms that you really need to have a hold of as we go through you will see the word enthalpy, E-N-T-H-A-L-P-Y, enthalpy. Now listen, enthalpy, you'll see it in the context of calculate the molar enthalpy, or uh, what's the enthalpy of formation. All that means is this, enthalpy means heat content, how much heat is contained in various substances. Enthalpy, just remember, enthalpy is heat or heat content. Now, couple of other terms that you know about for sure. Exothermic and endothermic. Well, an exothermic reaction is one that releases heat to its environment. But most specifically, it's always in the context of a system and its surroundings. So, if you've got a system, a thing, and that thing is releasing heat into the surrounding area, that's an exothermic reaction. Now you see, the reason we have to be so specific about this is because, you know, if you said, well, you know, in this reaction, it's exothermic in regards to the system, but you know the surroundings is absorbing energy, so it's endothermic in regard to the surroundings. You see how that can be confusing? Because all of a sudden, well, is this exo or endothermic? I guess it depends on the way you look at it. No, we're not going to look at it any differently than this. Whenever we use the words exothermic or endothermic, we're talking about the system and what the system experiences, not its surroundings. So, system loses energy to surroundings, exothermic. If the system is gaining energy from the surroundings, of course, that's endothermic. Endo means within. Exo means outer, like exoskeleton, right? You step on a bug, crunch, then squish, because the skeleton's on the outside. Ew. So, another way of describing system versus surroundings is just to set up what we usually do in the chemistry lab, which is a calorimetry experiment, or investigation. Now, I guess this is pretty much standard equipment um, for calorimetry. You've got your styrofoam cup, it's a great insulator, uh, likes to keep heat in, likes to keep cold out, and vice versa. And uh, how do you like my nifty little apparatus? Hey, this isn't just uh, 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 welfare chemistry here. This is what my kids use in school, too. I, I always have them set up one of these test tube clamps, put a paper towel in, and then you can slide the thermometer up and down. Uh, works better than those burette clamps to hold on to uh, thermometers, and, and I think it's quite effective. Don't you? <laughs> how can we actually measure the temperature change between two things, two substances? Well, we can use calorimetry. Uh, here's an ice cube. Put the ice cube into water. One of the most exciting experiments that you can actually do. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? You have a system and surroundings. And this is the thing that we have to consider. What is the system here? Well, the system is the thing that's under investigation, that's in isolation here, and that's the ice cube. So the ice cube is the system. What's its surroundings? Well. We want to make the heat exchange only between two substances, if at all possible. That's why we use the styrofoam cup uh, to, to minimize heat exchange with the environment. So the system, the ice cube, the surroundings, we just want that to be the water. So we want to make sure that the water here 
uh, is entirely closed off from the surroundings. So you say, well, what are you missing here? So you, you, you've got the water exposed to the surroundings, so we generally like to, take, like to take a lid, and we like to stick that on top, and then do the investigation. 